Hi, I'm Dan Brady, and this is a poem called The Passing of Brady's Fart. It was originally designed to be a companion piece to another poem called The Ode to P, which was an ode to P, which perhaps you'll hear at some other point. But anyway, so uh, this was also written in part while I was researching my family history in um, Ireland, as it were. And um, so some of the names and place names and people were part of that, uh, as, came to me as a result of that research, but may not be currently factual. Anyway, the passing of Brady's fart. On a moonless Caragallon eve, when the fairy's wind blew just right, there was a hissing, burning vent hardly audible in the wee of the night. But a pack of startling dogs were scattered off, they ran away howling, and the legendary Brady it was who breached that mighty fowling. They say he burst his breeches along the inseam and verily threw, that although he was outside, he left the scene seeking fresh air, too. Yea, dear friends, this was a ghastly break of wind, horrifically past, so that even in the dark of night, drunk alone, he was somberly put aghast. And it was this that started a tale which has not yet met at its ends, for today there lingers a trail amongst his foes and friends. The mild wind carried the filthy air straight along the street, where it startled cats, interrupting those in a humping in a fevered heat. Then, too, not far away, some drunken brutes got into one hell of a brawl, as each accused the other of dispersing the waft which had made their skins crawl. Their clamor awakened the good people slumbering abed in the houses there, who, with curious eyes, opened the windows, but then couldn't believe the air. Several, sick and loosing their dinners into the street, children, they cried. Old man Shannon, he woke up, took a sniff, had a heart attack, and died. The McEnroys, as ever, found it as an excuse, as if they needed one that night, to begin then and there, and proudly, a bitter, loud domestic fight. Still confused, the howling dogs came back along that same poor street, and yes, they and the brawlers both tangled as they chanced to meet. This chaos startled some nearby cattle in a pen, and then the sheep, and these, for want of good air, trod over the stakes to escape their keep. The rioting beasts crashed a near barn and brought down in its loft to rout two harbored lovers who fell, it is said, still joined in their sweet redoubt, who tried in vain to make safe their escape from that splintered pile, yet were discovered on their way to their respective beds apart by a mile. Yes, that foul wind set cruel fate against their fervent desire, as disheveled and in mental tumult their disjointed alibis lit suspicion's fire. Far too many mentioned seeing them out on that unholy night, and before it was done both came to rue their relations which had come to light. Her sister, their two furtive in the barn as well in delicate repose, and one can only imagine her thoughts when pressed she gnashed down, we suppose, to sever her dearest relations which wriggled under her very nose, leaving him but a bitter root which would never more enjoy its delicate flows. Oh, he's among the village still, for he came through it whole in other ways, but she suffered a gangrenous leg that lingered on for many days. And when the truth came out, her father took it up and hung it out to dry. And one can still see what's left, her foot, on his mantle withered and dry. And still she'll prattle, bemoaning bitter fate to her sister face to face, for it was she, her twin, who married into a much higher place, though it was she who worked up the trap all in her own little head, but whose dearly laid plans went so far awry that she got the wrong man to bed. Most hold it was not meant to be, nor undone. And few know the whole part of all that passed within that failing barn on the night of Brady's fart. Much happened in the commotion, and something a bit wilder, we fear, as families, beasts, and fowl brawled on the common so dark and drear. The noise was heard at McGee's pub, causing him to wake and horribly curse. 
His wife, a lynch no less, took up the struggle and back-talked him in verse. There were many who came to quell this cacophonic din pleading for quiet, but soon all in this wonderful hamlet were full tilt given over to commodious riot. Well, what do you think? But a cellar was broken out for its barrels of brew. These and some dark bottles were brought to the scene and enlivened it too. There was dancing and music to boot for those taking a break from the brawl. And no one, not even Brady, really knew what had started it all. No bedlam, no soccer games lost, no mad monk at the cathedral bell. No, nothing save opposing forces at bitter war could raise such riotous hell. Whiskey was looted, maiden screened, while men carried livestock off, and then police arrived. Just after three, but it didn't quiet down till half past ten. As usual, the city papers out the next day tried to get it down or right, but couldn't explain how some old roughs and street dogs had gotten into a fight. Or how animal farms and neighbors in town just had been drawn right in. They hailed it as proof. Ironically for the Irish, that drinking must be a sin. Yes, you know the story now, though you'd never think such a hullabaloo would arise on a night when the gentle southern fairy winds blew. Or how unintended consequences followed after a twitching thing fell out of the flu to die in the bubbling pot of Brady's cabbage, onion, and buttered garlic. There is the legend of Brady's fart, ladies and gentlemen, just for you. I thank you for your attentions.